we just drove three days. If you watched the last video, you know we drove three days across Colombia to get to Medellin in time for my doctor's appointment to see about my knee. But before we get to our campsite, just on the outside of the city, we have got to drive this van through downtown Medellin. We are not in rural Colombia anymore. We have reached Medellin. We will drive through it a little bit. And then we're going to go to a little bit to the east side, just on the outskirts. That's where our campsite is that we'll be at for a day or two. But I would say this is the big city. And they drive crazy here. So far, not as crazy as Cartagena. Bienvenidos, Medellin. <laughs> our first Colombian roundabout. We lived. Look, there's a ski resort in town. So Medellin has done something cool. They are using uh, cable cars to connect all these neighborhoods that are up on these hills that for years and years weren't connected to the main part of the city. Now, we think there's more than one, but we don't know for sure. We just went under one. Medellin is located in the province or state of Antioquia. Now there's 32 departments in Colombia, or as we call them in the US, states. But Medellin is in the Abuda Valley, a central region of the Andes Mountains. Now it's nestled in the valley, but I assure you it climbs up either side of the mountain. The population here is right around 4 million and the elevation is 4,900 feet. Now Medellin is nicknamed the city of the eternal spring because the average daily temperatures here are between 70 and 75 degrees and the flowers bloom year round, making this a world favorite for digital nomads and expats. Now, the Urban Land Institute awarded Medellin the Innovative City of the Year Award in 2013 for its tramways, outdoor escalators, and the city's world-class art galleries, libraries, and public places. In 2016, Medellin won an Urbanism Nobel Prize granted because of Medellin's transform transformation into an outstanding livable city. This has been wow. an incredibly long hour or longer. I don't even know how long it's taken us to maneuver through this city. But one thing I wanted to tell you is our campground is just on the outskirts of the city, up in the hills. And on iOverlander, there are explicit directions that if you just put it in Google Maps, it is going to take you away where you go on a really narrow alleyway that cars like ours won't go on. And then also an area where it is an extremely steep road. Now the lady that gave these explicit directions did say they made it up the very steep hill, but they had to go in first gear the whole way up and it took them like 20 minutes to get up the hill and that it was terrible. So she went around and she found, uh, what do they call Latitude and longitude points. Uh, Long, specific way locations, point. waypoints, that, uh, that she wrote down in the direction. And she said, so you put it in Google Maps, then you put in this waypoint as stop A, this waypoint as stop B, and then the campsite as stop three or C. And we have done that and so far, it is working, even though some of this has been steep and narrow, we've been able to make it. So, to whoever that really awesome lady was, thank you, we are almost to waypoint number two. We're almost there, guys. And I know I can't wait, G can't wait, Vanna's being really quiet, but she can't wait. But there is nobody that's gonna be any happier to see this campsite than this guy right here driving. <laughs> We're on a hill and it is becoming obvious that there are not many cars in Medellin or Medellin that are automatics. They all roll back down the hill a little bit and we got to make a tight turn and there's two lanes. Whew. It's 
right, G. Whew. Now, some of you have probably heard of Medellin through narco. Medellin was once ruled by crime, drug trafficking, and domestic war, and is now considered an international model for its rapid transformation, growth, and inspiration. The keys for the awe-inspiring transformation are, number one, cities don't make people poor, but rather attract the poor and vulnerable looking for a better opportunity. The focus was on integrating into the city dynamics with the collective potential in mind. Between 2008 and 2013, Medellin realized a 9% reduction in poverty. Number two, public and accessible urban services reduce inequality, make the citizens more active and safe, safer. The cable cars we showed you earlier and also escalators up the steep mountain slopes in the inner city are a few examples of the innovation. Number three, education drives change. By placing libraries and cultural assets alongside public transportation, it changed the collective mindset of the city. Number four, technology focused on functionality for the citizens, not scientific advancement. And number five, finally, prioritizing culture as a mechanism to bring people together with positive common shared values. In other words, the government acted for and invested in the people of all classes, making Medellin the beautiful and safe city it is today. Now, if they would only implement a driving school, that'd help us out a lot. <laughs> Craziness, Medellin, the traffic, the motorcycles, the turns, the hills, the rain is no joke, let me tell you. What, is it as bad as Cartagena in front of that market when we were leaving? It's as bad as we've driven it. All right. I'm glad it's Kurt driving and not me. Driving in this kind of a city takes not being quite such a courteous driver. I think I would be letting too many cars in. Turn right onto Calle 46, Carrera 37. Right here, Kurt. Right, and then almost immediate left, but I think so you right have there, to right? follow the. Kind of like that. Yes, follow the red car.
right, we just made it past waypoint B. The next stop is C, which is our camp. GPS says it's 20 minutes away. Can you make it, Kurt? We got it. I think we made it through the hardest part. We're following this Collectivo right here. He's leading the way. He's about as tall as we are, a little bit longer, and I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he's driven this road a few times. But it's uh, nice to be able to follow him because we kind of know what's happening. All right, we are definitely making it out of the really thick city traffic, but we are still on narrow, curvy roads with buses and pedestrians. There's some really cool looking road up there. Wonder if we're going up there, Kurt. I don't know. Huh. We're getting closer. Getting closer. Let's hope this campsite is everything it's supposed to be for us. Now that we've made it through Medellin, we're headed up to our destination, which is in Santa Elena. Now Santa Elena is a small mountain village above Medellin. The elevation is about 7,000 feet. So we've had to come up about 2,000 feet to get here, which also means the weather is different. So rather than the 70 to 75 degree temperatures, here the range is between 50 and 70, and there's quite a bit more rain. Now, every year, Medellin has an internationally renowned flower festival. And this festival, all the flowers for this festival come from right here in Santa Elena. So let's finish this drive, get to our spot, so G can cool out, I can chill, and we can all just go on and be happy. y'all can't see it but the little temperature thing on our dash that tells us the temperature outside says it's 66 degrees one thing about Medellin that we have not told you yet is it's a city that's known as forever spring it is always spring weather here it's supposed to be one of the cities with the best weather in the world so if you take this rain away I think they might be on to something with this temperature. We'll have to see. For those of you that have been following the whole journey, you're gonna understand this a little bit more than our new people following along. But me and Kurt tend to make fun of each other a little bit when we're driving. And ever since I drove the van down into Lake Atitlan, I have self-proclaimed myself as the winner of the curviest and most difficult road. I am officially releasing that title to Kurt. Now, I never conceded that title to Snow. <laughs> I have driven on some crazy roads myself, so even though she's conceding it, I still think I have number one, no. two, and three. No, that, that is not true. 
All right, guys, we made it. And with that, <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram to see what goes on in between videos. We will see you guys in a few days. That was crazy, insane, and intense. Thanks for coming along, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys. <laughs>